So welcome to the advancements in thermoplastic materials for your partially edontulous patients. It's a webinar product training being presented by Scott McMillan, and we will begin the webinar shortly. And now it is my pleasure to introduce my lovely boss, Lisa Wosoko, Director of NDX Education Center. Her contact information will be posted in the chat box. Take it away, Lisa. Well, thanks, Jessica. Another great introduction. I, I love watching Jessica do her introductions. And it really is my pleasure this evening to be able to introduce a long, long-standing friend, um, Scott McMillan, and be able to bring him onto this stage. Um, Scott started his dental career as a technical sales representative for the largest dental laboratory in New England. He supported dentists with dental laboratory technologies. He has presented lectures and hands-on training to dentists, auxiliaries, and technicians across North America. He has guest lectured at various dental schools and regularly, regularly conducts training programs at state and regional dental conferences. In his present role, Scott works directly with dental laboratories across the U.S., providing sales support on all Myerson LLC product lines. Scott also facilitates comprehensive product and communications training by webinar for dental laboratory technicians, as well as sales teams. And I, like I said, I am just so happy to have Scott with us. And with that, Scott, I'm gonna turn the screen over to you to start your presentation and welcome. Thank you, Lisa. I wanna thank everybody for uh, joining us this evening to uh, review this material. Uh, it really has come a long way in regards to materials that are available now and, and just kind of the progression that we've made over the years uh, with injectables into CAD CAM technology and now the ability, the availability to do some printing. Uh, so as she said, my name is Scott McMillan. I'm the US Sales Director with Meyerson, and uh, I appreciate being here tonight to share this information with you. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that metal cast partials that have been the default selection dating back decades, um, cast metal increased in popular specifically in the 1930s when the price of gold had doubled. Uh, they are functional solutions that provided patients and dentists with an appliance that replaced missing teeth, uh, working function, and to a point, some aesthetics. But in, in time, what had happened was a lot of people were looking to go, patients and doctors were looking to go metal free. They were looking for some solution they could use that because uh, patients, uh, some patients didn't respond well to the metal. They didn't like the unsightly clasps uh, in the anterior zone. So what is a flexible partial? It's a removable partial denture made from thermoplastic material to replace missing teeth. Now, the initial application of this material or, or the process they used to make them, uh, it was melted in a separate oven while the prepared dental flask was warmed separately because you had to bring that flask up to a specific temperature so that when the material, the molten material was injected in, it wouldn't start to cure or polymerize too soon, which would cause rolling inside the flask, uh, a lot of uh, voids, uh, just, just a lot of difficulty. So you had to make sure that that flask was at the proper temperature to receive that molten material and allow it to flow into the intricate areas of that uh, prosthetic. Uh, then they would bring that melted thermoplastic and join it with the flask at, in, in most cases, it would be a manual, an electrical, or a pneumatic injection system in a perfect storm to inject it into that flask. If any one of those things, the timing was off on, you could create a lot of issues that would create a remake, uh, delaying the case, getting to the dentist, and just a lot of headaches. So timing was critical for the success. The more recent injection systems, somewhat like what you're looking at here, they would allow the melting of the thermoplastic granules, uh, the heating the flask and, and the proper temperature and pre-programmed injection and hold times to be accomplished in a single unit providing optimal results. So it would melt the pellets into the heater and then it would use a, an auger type uh, system or a piston to inject it into the already heated flask and give you optimal results because everything was timed properly. Now, when discussing flexible partials options to, to dental professionals like that are on the call tonight, one common misperception brought up is that all flexible partials are pretty much the same. Uh, comments include that I've heard, uh, as Lisa had mentioned, I called on dentists around New England, particularly around the, uh, 
the Boston and North Shore areas of Massachusetts, uh, I would usually hear very similar comments from the dental professionals that I called on. Uh, one was that patients felt that a flexible partial was a temporary solution due to staining and odors, and that they would re be required to remake that appliance for the patient, um, and it would normally be at no charge. So, you know, they would want a new one because it was stained and, and smelled and it just it wasn't something that looked the way they expected it to so the doctor would have to remake it without being able to charge them which obviously was not a positive thing another comment that was uh that they couldn't add additional teeth or they couldn't do some repairs without the need to make the entire appliance from scratch uh, i also heard that it's uh it was a difficult time uh that the appliance was to adjust the chair side so if they needed to adjust the chair side, they had to have specific, specific equipment to do those adjustments. Um, and also uh, last that I heard was the, just the, the cleansers. They had to buy specific cleansers in order to maintain whatever type of a guarantee that the product had on it for longevity. So uh, at this point right now, all these concerns are warranted, but dependent on the material makeup, uh, because up to this slide, all flexible partials had the same inherent benefits. Uh, now we're going to discuss the different benefits offered by certain materials that are utilized. And they all are very functional and they're all uh, they're good appliances. It's just that different materials have different properties that provide different benefits. So first we'll start with the, the nylons, which are also known as polymorphous. Some examples of that would be the Valplast, the TCS, Sunflex, Flexstar, um, there's, there's several different products out there that fall under the polymorphous nylon name. Uh, they're a semi-crystalline material. Um, another example of it would have been the FRS, which that right there is uh, no longer available. So that would be your nylons. There's also the polyolefins. The examples of that would be your Duraflex and your Iflex. And the acetyl resins are your Duracetyl and the milled version of that would be Zerlex acetyl. So as I said, we're going to talk now about the different materials. Now, Duraflex is a Myerson product, and it was one of the products that when I was asked to talk to a doctor about it, I could, I could directly answer each one of the concerns that we just mentioned. So one of the tests that we did on this was the stain testing because duraflex takes up less moisture it's a very dense material the uh, polyolefin thermoplastic is a very dense material whereas if you looked under a microscope with the amorphous nylons what you would see is you would see uh bubbles and spacings on there and what the the function of those was is as you squeeze the appliance together that flex that you get are because it's compressing those air pockets now, the downside to those air pockets with the nylons was that it allowed a pathway inside that appliance to allow staining and the collection of odors and bacteria, which, uh, which nobody was really that positive on. So with the Duraflex being uh, as dense, the makeup of being as dense as it is, although you can still get the same flexibility out of this material, all based upon the, the proper wax up and processing technique to keep it, keep it at the right thicknesses, which keeping it the right thickness, you get the exact same flexibility. The difference being is it may get surface uh, stains on it, but they can be easily cleaned off with over-the-counter cleansers. This was another test we did where we took a uh, polyolefin Duraflex partial and we put it into water and we took one of the competitive nylon materials and put it into the into the water and I actually had this done for me uh, in several laboratories where they were showing me this because I wasn't sure how fast that nylon would absorb water and, and sink to the bottom. So they dropped the Duraflex one in the sink and then they dropped the nylon partial in and it's almost like the, the ballast on a submarine. As soon as that started to fill with water, it quickly sank to the bottom of, of the uh, container that it was in. And the reason for that was because it allowed that moisture to get inside of it. Now with water, it's not really a big issue, but when we start thinking about uh, patients that uh, drink coffee, drink tea, maybe wine, that would be a consideration because of the fact that it would, it would allow that denture or partial to start to discolor over time. With the 
Duraflex material not absorbing that. And right here it shows that it's 0.05% uh, water absorption with the Duraflex on this test. And the leading nylon partial had 1.30. Now that 0.05%, that could technically be only surface water on that. So it, it doesn't absorb any moisture into it. So it's not gonna take those odors. It's not gonna take the staining and create that, uh, that bacterial buildup that you can receive with the other appliances. Now, with that being said, there also is a cleanser that's required for these materials. Some of them, um, the nylons particularly, you had to purchase the company's cleansing material in order to keep the guarantee in place. And the reason for that is if you put certain cleansers with it, it would, it would infiltrate the partial itself and it could create damage inside of it. Uh, Possibly, possibly make it brittle, maybe make it break. And so you had to go with the correct cleanser. And in a lot of situations, I would receive calls from dental offices asking me where they could get a cleanser that was on back order, asking if there was another cleanser they could use. So in calling the companies that actually made these products, they informed me that they had to use the cleanser that was, that was fabricated for that appliance or it would void their warranty. So that kind of left a between a rock and a hard place. With the Duraflex, any over-the-counter cleanser will work to clean them, which is nice because if you have a patient that's got a maxillary full acrylic denture, whatever they're cleansing, uh, cleansing that denture with, they can utilize to cleanse the Duraflex partial. So that makes a, that's a huge benefit for them. Now, the other thing that uh, the doctors would tell me was that when they went to deliver a flexible partial to a patient, they would experience difficulties when they went to adjust it. If they didn't, if they didn't have the proper tool chair side with them, they would usually gum up their burr to the point where they couldn't use it anymore. And it, they just got really frustrated with it. So, so hearing all these frustrations, I felt, you know, really bad, but, but I had a solution for them when our laboratory started working with Duraflex. Now you can make adjustments with the, nyl the amorphous nylons very easily, but you need to use something like this green mounted stone. It's actually a ceramic stone. It's used for adjusting porcelains, but this stone will be able to adjust the, any of the flexible partials, including Duraflex, because it wouldn't gum up when they were taking it to the partial to make those adjustments prior to delivery. Now, the nice thing about the polyolefin thermoplastics is whatever you have chair side that you've been using to make adjustments on your acrylic appliances, you can use successfully on the Duraflex. It adjusts very, very similar to acrylic. The only thing you wanna keep in mind is you wanna do slow speed. So less than 25,000 RPMs, uh, you can use a rubber tip on it, whatever you need to do to make your adjustments on it. Uh, I did a program where the laboratory had brought in hand pieces for the doctors to try adjusting the Duraflex partials that we had there. And during that time, we had a technical difficulty, which is always fun to have. And what happened was one of the doctors went over and sat down at the handpiece. He buried the pedal and he hit it at probably 100,000 RPMs or how fast they would go. And they melted the material right onto the burr. He held it up in his hand and he made it a point to tell me, Scott, he says, he goes, this melted right onto the burr. But when I walked over, I could just flick it right off. It did not embed inside the burr. It just simply melted because of friction. So if you keep that below 25,000 RPMs, it really adjusts very similar to the acrylics that you're used to working with. Another benefit is the fact that the doctors would share that when they needed to make any kind of a repair or add a tooth to it, it basically meant they had to start from scratch and rebuild the entire appliance. With the Duraflex, because the Duraflex material will meld to itself using specific, it is a laboratory procedure, uh, but it's very easily achieved without the need of even needing to reinvest it. They just use a putty matrix and a, and a, and a proven technique. And this case right here, they had, they had injected this case. And for whatever reason, because Murphy's Law came into play, that tooth had moved a little bit. So all the lab tech had to do was remove the tooth off there just prep the area a little bit, then using the technique, put the tooth back in place. And that right-hand picture is the outcome. They're able to replace a tooth on the same exact partial with no line of demarcation, which means no weak spot. 
So on an acrylic parcel that's made, even if it's brand new, if they ever have to do any kind of a repair to it or they have to add acrylic to it, you can always see that line of demarcation where there's different materials. With this material, you'll have the exact same strength where the repair is, along with the fact that there is no line of demarcation that the patient or the doctor can see. So here's an example of a Duraflex partial on a stone model. And when we took this picture, we realized that it was a great show and tell item because it is a very translucent material. It comes in five different shades. However, it's very translucent. So even on this case, you can see with the stone model underneath it, it allows the, the Duraflex allows a substructure shade to transfer through. Along with uh, an example of a case where the patient presented with severe tori. A traditional cast or a rigid RPD would have had serious challenges in this case where the flexibility would prove uh, a more comfortable and obtainable path of insertion. If you have a cast RPD um, and it may be indicated that the solution required a cast partial, you also have the ability to opt for a more aesthetic solution by replacing the metal clasp with a flexible aesthetic, flexible solution. Duraflex tissue colored clasp attached to a cast framework for anterior tissue borne aesthetics gives a patient the support that you may require with a cast framework with the aesthetics of that class. So the patient's happy that in the aesthetic zone, they don't have that unsightly cast clasp in appearance. Another opportunity or option you have would be to include a, a framework off of the rigidity and then with the aesthetics of having the laboratory inject Duraflex uh, for the class and over the saddles. Uh, these were very popular. Uh, the doctors and the patients accepted these very well. And again, this is a situation where the flexibility may have been a contraindicator for this particular patient. They were able to utilize the best of both worlds and provide a cast framework with Duraflex included with it. Uh, another example would be if you needed to have, uh, if you had a problem making a partial without rest and indirect retention on it, you can still make the aesthetic partial with the rest when you prescribe a combo. It's the best of both worlds again because you get to be able to handle something that uh, may have a long free end saddle. Long free end saddles in cases with flexible partials, that can be detrimental because you don't want to flex on a situation like that. So your option may be to either have the lab process it a little bit thicker because with the Duraflex material, if you process a little thicker, your, your traditional one would probably be between 7 tenths and 1.2 millimeters in thickness. If you were to go above 1.2 to maybe 1.5, you're gonna build some rigidity into the Duraflex material that might help with those long free end saddles as well. So it really is within the laboratory's um, framework to design this for whatever situation they may come across. Uh, if they have uh, multiple teeth missing in a quadrant, this is a good solution too, where you can put a uh, cast framework with a Duraflex flexible solution uh, process onto it rather than acrylic. A couple of other applications would be for a flexible flipper. So if you were just replacing maybe one or two anterior teeth or as a flexible Nesbit or a unilateral, uh, depending on what you want to call it, it's uh, ideal for up to two teeth you can put with a Nesbitt appliance. These are also very comfortable for patients to wear, um, have the benefit of the Duraflex material for the uh, avoiding of the staining and the odors, and it's a very comfortable appliance for the patient. So that was, that was Duraflex. Now, Duraflex and Visiclear are identical chemical makeup. They're both the same polyolefin thermoplastic, the only difference is, is that the VisiClear does not contain any pigmentation, any of the pink pigmentation in it. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's not optically crystal clear because optically crystal clear has been proven to not be very good in the mouth because of it shows shadows. So it shows an optical path into a shadowed area. Uh, a patient might get a optically crystal clear appliance because there are many on the market 
and when they when they insert it they see a dark dark area a dark shadow they remove it to clean it there's nothing there they put it back in and they experience the same thing again the benefit with the VisiClear is it's got a little bit of a haze to it so it's a it's a modeled clear material what it does is it refracts the light that comes into it so it does not present with a with that that optical digital or not optical digital but the optical pathway for the light to show shadows on it okay but what is nice about it is if you're having a hard time selecting a shade and again the shade on these is going to be get you in the ballpark the translucency is what's going to bring in the the natural tissue and give you that chameleon effect so they are uh they're both uh pathalate and bpa free i think i said that right ph phthalate and bpa free um which will be great for patients that have any kind of an allergy, but specifically a patient that might have certain metal allergies. Uh, the Duraflex has trace amounts of iron oxide pigment in it. It's very low and it's very rare that there's a, ever a situation with it. But in the instance that there, you might have a patient that's extremely sensitive, by going with a VisiClear, you will rule out any type of uh, uh, oxide pigments inside of the appliance itself. So this is a picture here. This, this shows a fabricated uh, VisiClear partial on the frame. And then they show the VisiClear clasp. As I showed you with the Duraflex, you can also use a VisiClear clasp to help mask that out. Where this comes in really handy is where the VisiClear can be a combination of tissue and tooth borne support, primarily flexibles or tissue supported and the cast or the rigid materials are tooth borne supported. With this, you can kind of combine the two and actually overlap the tissue and the tooth. And because of the VisiClear material, it will, it will help just be a chameleon. It'll show the tooth structure as well as the tissue. Now, I've had situations where doctors have gotten these cases and they say, you know, this is not clear, it's called VisiClear. It looks almost, like a milk jug white. Now that's normal, that's the material, that's the natural material as it's produced. The answer to that was shared with me from a laboratory. They said what they would do is they'd put a little bit of mineral oil on it like they've done here, or they would just, mineral oil would stay on it, it was not harmful to the patient. So when the doctor got it and inserted it in the mouth, it then becomes moist inside the oral environment and it gives it the same result. So it has that, that very translucent look that's going to capture the underlying shades and, and just disappear into the arch. The next material we're going to talk about is an acetyl resin. Uh, duracetyl is a polyoxymethylene or an acetyl for, for a shorter name. Uh, this family of materials is used in several different industries uh, due to its high strength and its wear resistance. Um, this is this is for a dental application, so it's been refined more than those materials, but they have the same type of a chemical makeup and strength. It's very biocompatible, and it's a great choice for dental prosthetics. Uh, this is considered a semi-rigid material, whereas the Duraflex and VisiClear are a flexible material. Uh, so it's compared to a traditional flexible material, this will give you more rigidity, uh, but the material makeup will give you a, a provide additional strength aesthetics with some flexibility, just enough flexibility to provide decent path of insertion and comfort for the patient. This is a Duraflex, or I'm sorry, a VisiClear, yeah, I'll get that right. This is actually a Duracetal uh, framework with acrylic added to it, uh, which is a great solution. It's gonna, they come in all of the Vita shades, so you can get a, a really close match to the tooth. So you have an aesthetic an anterior clasp. In this case, uh, it's gonna be a tooth borne partial as I mentioned earlier. And it's also, this material is strong enough that it would make good rests if you needed to uh, indicate you needed rest for this particular appliance. You'd be able to put rests on it because it is a very strong and resilient material. This is a picture here of a the duracetal clasp added on to a framework. So this could be a situation where labs shared that they would fabricate a chromium cobalt framework, send it to the doctor for a try-in, and just leave a note in there saying, you know, with this clasp being uh, 
up in the anterior aesthetic zone, we do have an opportunity to provide you with an aesthetic clasp on this framework. So it's, a, again, another very simple lab procedure that they can take that case back, cut off the existing metal clasp that's in the aesthetic zone, and they can wax up using a putty matrix. They would add a this duracetal clasp on there and finish it, and it, it gains its uh, retentions, mechanical retention through the existing meshwork and then they would just process the acrylic on the way they traditionally would, and it would provide you with a, a very aesthetic result. So we've, we've gone through the injectable side, and the injectable side's been around uh, for over 30 years. Uh, well, at least with, with these materials, they actually started injectables back in the 50s, uh, but they've come a long way with those materials. But these have been proven uh, effective and beneficial for the last 30, year, uh, 30 years at least um, with proven success. So before we go into the next stage, uh, I'd like to answer any questions you might have on these injectable flexible materials. Uh, Scott, we got a question actually from earlier in the webinar. Sure. It was moisture absorption test was in 2012. Is there more current data? There, There isn't on that, but that's, I mean, that, that test shows the fact that it's the same material. The material has not changed and the test was done in water. So those two items are the, exactly the same as they were then. And the, the, none, of the, none of the properties of the material have changed since then. Great. And then um, I'm going to click on Troy Anderson. I'm clicking to ask for you to unmute to ask your question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes can. we can. Yeah, I was wondering, um, on the case with the tori, do you think a, a lack of vertical stop would be problematic in a case where you've got tori and a flexible material? Well, the, the one thing uh, that I didn't mention on those that uh, vertical clearance is critical on these, you're going to need at least a minimum of five millimeters of vertical clearance with the teeth because of the fact that if you go any lower than that, uh, we're going to have to, the laboratory in the fabrication process needs to put diatorics inside the denture teeth because the, the benefit of all of these materials we talked about um, from the Meyerson side where they don't absorb any fluids also means that you can't, you won't attach things to it. So unlike acrylic, which will bond to a denture tooth, any of these materials here require mechanical retention. So you're gonna need room for the diatorics and you want to have at least a solid millimeter of material underneath that tooth just to give it stability on the base. Um, so there, there will be situations that you will not be able to apply it. But on that particular situation there, where the tori was up in the pallet that far, they did have adequate vertical. How about vertical stop, though? It's going to be a primarily tissue-borne partial. Will that be problematic for comfort? Um, not the way they make it because they're going to they're going to block that out as well. So they'll put a wash in there to block that out. So so from the situations that I've been involved with, they were able to make it comfortable for the patient. But I can see your point that, you know, in certain situations that would not apply. I mean, there, there would be situations where the vertical could create pain and you just aren't going to be able to work around it. But in the majority of cases like that, with a with the proper manufacturing, with the lab technician being well trained and skilled on it, they're able to do that. Very good, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, Troy. And then we have a question in the Q&A. How do these materials bond to chrome cobalt? cobalt? Only mechanically? Yes, it's strictly mechanical. So, so it would be using the mesh work. I mean, it's the same way as acrylic. Acrylic doesn't bond to the chromium cobalt or the metals either. So they need to build that mesh work in. So we're gonna use that same type of a design on that framework and just flow it in so it has adequate mechanical retention to hold it in place. Great, thank you. And that is all the questions I'm seeing at this time. Okay, uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna review the digital side of dentistry. Now, one of the interesting things was that we, uh, when our company went from the injectable side, which we've been very successful for, I mean, Meyerson has been involved in dentistry for over a hundred years now. 
And we had the solution for the injectables that uh, was very well received by both the dentist and the patients. When we come out with the digital side or the milled side of it, I thought for sure that we would see a dip in sales on the injectable side. But amazingly enough, it's it's basically offered a, a new section to our sales where the injectable side continues to grow at the same rate they have. And now we're able to offer the, the CAD CAM side of things to get uh, for, for the laboratories that want to go digital, for the dental offices that want to go digital. And the results have just been incredible. So we're going to review that right now. And I'm going to show you what's obtainable for removal restorative options using CAD CAM technology. So the, the materials we talked about, the Duraflex, the VisiClear, and the Duracetal are all available now in milled puck form. So the, and it's not a new um, material, it's the same exact proven material, it's just in puck form. There, there is a little bit of difference in handling this material as far as the, the teeth and, um, and being able to uh, process it, but we're gonna talk about that as well. So we have the Duraflex material here, and in these cases, the, the frameworks are gonna be designed uh, similar with the saddles on a chromium cobalt metal framework. And when I say that, it has to do with like that, the question that the doctor had just asked, where we need to build a mesh work into the mill so that we can flow acrylic onto it. All right, so this is going to give us a flexible framework. And just in the saddle areas where we're gonna be putting the teeth, the laboratory would use a conventional technique of of investing in either pressing, pouring, or injecting the acrylic into it. So they would go through the computer-aided design, the computer-aided manufacturing in the puck, and these right here snap onto the models with incredible accuracy. You can just, you can hear them snap into place. Um, the, the waxed up and the analog method of making these partials works great. But the digital side, I've been told, just gives it that little extra uh, accurate snap when they go into place. And right after that's done, they can either they can do a wax up and send it for a try in. They can do bite blocks on it or they can go right to process and give you the final fixture. As I mentioned, there's also the VisiClear is available. In fact, we started when we got into the CAD CAM milling discs at Meyerson. Uh, we started with the, the VisiClear pucks. Uh, we had laboratories that were waxing up, injecting the frameworks, and then adding the acrylic, the same type of design that you see here, but they were doing it the analog style, and they were very successful with doing that. Uh, we actually got their help to help beta test with these when we came out with the milled appliances. And what they would do is they would send to the doctor a milled framework along with a waxed up and injected framework and just ask the doctor to specify which one of the frameworks they'd like to go to processing with and in a hundred percent of the cases the doctor selected the milled appliance and again it's it's not that the waxed up and injected one didn't work well it's just that they felt that the milled one had that digital accuracy to it which was, is what they were looking for and they've had complete success we've had success around the world with this material here being milled and processed with uh, traditional acrylic. Uh, this just shows a nice picture of two processed and polished VisiClear frameworks with acrylic. Uh, so on these right here, you would use the um, mesh work on the framework for the retention of the acrylic, but as with traditional RPDs, chromium cobalt, the chemical, um, chemical bonding of the denture chute to the acrylic material or the PMMA will give you the hold to the teeth. So, so this is a great solution for aesthetics if you're looking for a metal free solution. Uh, the next was the Xerlux Acetyl. Uh, Xerlux Acetyl is a branded Zon name using uh, the Myerson Duracetyl material. So utilizing the extrusion process provides a uniform shade and strength to these pucks. Uh, it can be added to and repaired uh, using the Myerson Duracetal material as with the VisiClear and the Duraflex milled. If for whatever reason something happens to one of the clasps 
or some sort of a, a repair needs to happen because the material is identical to the analog injectable material, they can use the same repair or add processes that they do to the injectables onto the mill, which is really nice. Uh, these are available in Vita Shades A1, A2, A3, A3.5, B1, C3, and the bleach is a G2. It's also available in pink, which is incredibly uh, popular, which I was kind of surprised, but they, they can make these frameworks out of it. It's like a light pink shade that works really well for a framework that's very well received. So the, this material has been proven, all these materials have been proven. They've, they've been in the body for, you know, decades. Uh, the acetyl materials have been used in, in other areas like uh, hip replacements, things like that. So it's very well received by the body. Um, and in dentistry, this material is about 80% stronger than existing PMMA. So it's very strong. And because it's so strong and it's so versatile, it's able to be used in several different applications. And I'm going to review with you right now. So the Primary indication was for a replacement or a metal free replacement for a chromium cobalt cast framework. Uh, this appliance right here uh, is, is something that our technical, uh, our technical instructor, Chris Shermerhorn, who is a CDT, who is the co-inventor and the co-developer of our materials. He tried this with a doctor that uh, presented him with a patient who was chewing through uh, an acrylic or a PMMA night guard, bruxing appliance, probably about every three months. Um, they were just destroying it and the doctor was making them a new one. So when they approached Chris with this, he, he came up with an uh, indication for the duracetyl material and now the Xerlux acetyl material where he could make a bruxism appliance for this patient that provided a smooth frictionless surface and it would allow the opposing dentition to effortlessly slide over where traditional acrylic or PMMA night guards would normally be damaged due to the parafunctional forces. So the doctor sent me a picture of that uh, later to show me that the area of that appliance that was being destroyed in acrylic on the Xerlux acetyl night guard, it just had, simply had a shiny spot. It wasn't a groove, it was just a shiny spot where that opposing cusp tip that was wiping out the other appliances just slid across the top of it. So it really is a great solution. Um, as far as a clenching appliance, it is very rigid, so it may not be you know, applicable there, but as a bruxing appliance, it, uh, it does a great job. And adding that to the CAD CAM technology, it just, it's, a, it's a very accurate fit. Um, they don't come in clear, but they do come in two shades. So you can do something even in a bleach shade and, uh, and they've been very well received. Uh, another placement for this or an indication is long-term provisionals or temporaries. Uh, because acetyl doesn't absorb fluids, as we talked about, as a long-term provisional, it won't stain and collect odors that acrylics can. So this is good for if you're doing a full mouth rehab and, and these temporaries need to remain in the patient's mouth for an extended period of time. This material here where it, it can be stained, it's not going to be aesthetic as the all ceramics, obviously. It can be stained, but keep in mind that that stain, because it has a difficult time, it can't be absorbed into it, it's going to be a surface stain. So you're probably looking at a couple of few months where that will you know, maintain the aesthetic uh, staining on top of it, but uh, it will not absorb odors and, and other stains and, and bacteria into it. So it works, it works phenomenal for that application. So for a patient, this material provides durable, strong, hygienic yet comfortable to wear and easy to take in and out of the mouth. That picture on the far right right there is, is something that I was speaking with an oral surgeon on and they shared that they really liked the, the acetyl material because it can be processed in a monolithic format. So as a Nesbit or you know a Nesbit for one or two tooth replacements, they were using these over a surgical site because Unlike a Nesbit made with any of the flexible materials, if you tried to relieve the tissue borne side of that to give clearance and you got up near the diatoric, chances are pretty good you were going to displace the denture tooth. 
Whereas this can be processed monolithically, same material through and through, it gives you the ability to reduce that tissue borne size so it doesn't make contact with the site where at the same time, it's gonna provide a space maintainer, uh, somewhat aesthetics function, and it's gonna protect that area during the healing process. So that's that's something that uh, that I was really excited to hear when they said that they, they liked using those for that purpose and uh, it makes sense. Uh, now, most people, I, I've talked to very few people that haven't heard of the Snap-on Smile. Uh, it was a product by Denmat uh, that was out years ago and four years it was out there. They did an astronomical job of promoting that product and it was a great product. It was initially made by injecting our duracetal materials, what they used, and then they were one of the first to get into the milling where they would mill the, the Zerlux acetyl or but prior to becoming Xerox acetyl, the same material, the extruded material, they would scan and mill those and get a better fit and a better result utilizing the um, this material for the snap-on smile. It just, it worked well and it provided them with a very accurate fit. So what is a snap-on smile? It's a removable full or partial arch that covers a patient's existing dentition. The CAD CAM design and fabricated thermoplastic appliance is entirely tooth borne, engaging the patient's natural undercuts. So Meyerson has acquired the rights to snap on Smile, the name, and continues to be the manufacturer of the Xerlux Acetyl LTD puck, which is specifically used to mill the snap on Smile. So it's, it's a specific puck made out of the same material as the Xerlux Acetyl, but it is exclusively approved for the snap-on smile. The Xerlux acetyl pucks, these, these are like 22 millimeters in thickness as opposed to the 15, 20, or 25 millimeters. So it, it is, as it shows here, it's made for snap-on smile. So the process for this is the laboratory would do a design based on the doctor's scan or their, the scan of the doctor's models. The laboratory would mill it and then it would be finished and sent on to the doctor to be delivered. The, the snap-on smile is very helpful restoring the desired vertical while at the same time it provides a patient with a, a functional equivalent to, to an ivory wax up. Uh, the dentist is able to fine tune the patient's I, um, ideal vertical while at the same time you're gaining patient acceptance uh, for future rehabilitation because uh, they'll be able to see a sample of what's possible with the, with a restorative material. Now, this talks right here about ideal cases. This is a very attractive young lady. Um, her teeth are fine. They're very healthy. It's just that she wanted uh, a, a prettier smile. So it was able to take the, the uneven spacings and it was able to utilize the design to be able to provide her with a a snap on smile for whether she needed it for wedding pictures or she just wanted to have this look to see if that, you know, maybe, maybe getting some prosthetic uh, rehabilitation down the road might be something that interested her. But uh, it, it does work um, to take care of uneven, uneven spacing, irregularly sized or shaped, yet otherwise healthy teeth. Uh, discolored teeth. Now, if the teeth are badly stained, this material it does have some translucency to it. So you may not get the results you're expecting if you're looking to, you know, bleach out extremely dark tetracycline staining or other staining that might be there. Um, but if a patient has a collapsed vertical, this has been a great solution to help the doctor regain that. Uh, it is imperative that, that the patient expectations be set at the front end of this when using a snap-on smile device. Um, as an example was if you had a patient um, and let's see that if we're using the one to 10 scale where 10 is the most beautiful smile you can imagine and one would be the most horrific smile you can imagine if you were looking to maybe bring somebody from a level two upwards to possibly a level six um, that case would be considered a, a complete success story but you will not be bringing a patient an aesthetic level seven to a nine or a 10, uh, not without the use of all ceramics or veneers. But on this particular situation right here, you can see where they were able to determine 
a proper vertical for this patient. And at the same time, again, if they were looking to do restorative surgery for this patient, it would show them, you know, what, what kind of outcome they could end up with. So a patient can wear this. I mean, you can wear this just like a removable partial denture. They can wear it to eat. They can wear it just like as they would a removable partial denture. And they can kind of get the response from their, their colleagues and their friends on what it looks like and get an idea of, of how good it makes them feel. And it brings them to the point now where they would be more open for that discussion to go to the next level and get the restorative work done. Um, there are some challenging cases, like I said, setting that expectation um, for aesthetic results. Uh, if they have really large diastemas, it, those could be a challenge. You'd want to definitely communicate with your dental lab technician on those. Now, if, there, if there's a diastema in between the centrals and you can share it from both centrals, you'd be able to close that as they did on this case here. If they have clinically jeopardized dentition, um, you don't want to put anything on until those are taken care of. If they have large existing teeth or a gummy smile, this is gonna this is gonna add some thickness onto those teeth, depending on you know the situation that you're looking at. So you don't want to make big teeth even larger. But again, it, it all comes back to that patient expectations for aesthetic results. Uh, the Dentavera milling discs. Uh, last year, the dental division of Solvay was acquired by Myerson because of Myers, Myerson's growing their offerings to the dental community. Um, and that's giving us, our company, the rights to the Dentavera milling discs, which is made from the Altair AKP material. This material comes in two shades. It has a tan and a white. Um, and it is, um, it is made up from a high performance Errol Ketune polymer that was specifically formulated for dental applications. Uh, its primary purpose or indication was for a replacement for a chromium cobalt framework. And one of the things that um, Chris Shermerhorn has determined is the fact that because this has a unique uh, ability to chemically bond to acrylics, unlike the other materials that we are required to do, use mechanical retention, it will, this will give a very strong chemical bond for PMMA or acrylics onto it. Now you can see on here the design, they did put some mesh work in there just to give added retention to it and also to help um, underneath with the saddle area to put acrylic there, which would allow the doctor the ability to do a chair side reline if needed, but it would chemically bond, which makes it usable for a friction bar application over an all on X type of a um, implant case. Um, it, the frames are made from the Dentavera milling disc. They're digitally designed and milled, and they result in a very superior fit, as we've been talking about. Um, it's people have asked, how is this compared to a peak material? Peak being P E K. This material is P A E K, which is slightly different in terms of its molecular composition, and uh, it's typically got a little higher ductility with it, which gives it a little more um, fracture resistance when being stretched. Okay, and, and one, of the, one of the newest products that I wanted to just to bring to everybody's attention um, at this point is a new printable photopolymer. Trusan is an exciting new photopolymer that is FDA cleared as a class two long-term denture tooth material. Up till now, uh, the photopolymers have been class one approved by the FDA, at least the majority of them. Uh, the class twos are just coming out now, but the Trusana was released in November of last year, and it has a class two long term, which means this makes a beautiful, brilliant looking long term denture tooth as a digital solution. And the, the benefit to its success comes from the fact that it has absolutely no fillers. A lot of the class ones have fillers in them. What those fillers create is... Um, uh lack of resilience they don't hold up very well and they wear down so i remember going to meetings in the last few years where they said that digital dentistry was here for making a full digital denture and the truth of the matter that i got feedback from doctors and laboratories across the country from was they stated the fact that the dentures were good 
they looked decent, but the teeth wore down much quicker than traditional carded denture teeth did. So they weren't quite there. So the true brilliance of this material, the strength, toughness, and wear resistance is where, where the, the studies that have been done on the Trusana material, which have been extensive, show that not only is it stronger in a dry environment, but because it, it lacks the fillers or doesn't have the fillers in it, that it, when it's put into a wet environment, such as the oral environment, the the strength drops minimally compared to any of the competitors are out there that's for flexural strength and flexural modulus and the reason for that is the if you look at this water uptake comparison uh current uh gen 3ds have a 2.0 percent water uptake denture teeth and this is premium denture teeth is at 0.4 percent and we were amazed to see the Trusana come in at 0.35% in the tests that were done. So it just doesn't take up that water. So it is a, it is a premium denture tooth solution for printable denture teeth. The Trusana is presently available in uh, the most popular shades that we experience as a tooth company, which is A1, A2, A3, B1, C1, and 51, which is the Meyerson bleach shade. Um, the test, some of the tests that were done also showed that Trusana to be two times more wear resistance than compared to leading them premium carded denture teeth. So premium carded denture teeth, this material printed was two times more wear resistant. And as far as toughness, Trusana's amazing success comes from the fact that it, it does not contain the fillers, as I mentioned, and it provides six times less water resorption than other 3D printed resins. And I mean, that, that's amazing right there. And, and all these materials are not the same. Uh, Jim Swartout at Meyerson, who is uh, the CEO and president, he has spent an immense amount of time He's brought on a team of, of PhD chemists and laboratories that have been testing this for us across the country. And they're, they're all independent tests that are being done. None of them being tested in-house. They're all independent tests that are being done. And the results have been something that you really want to keep an eye on. This is the technical data sheet that's available from Meyerson on the Trusana. Um, anybody that's interested in this, uh, my email will be at the end of this. I'd be happy to send it out if you'd like to get this, but uh, it really is an amazing product. And at the present time, there is a, we have the tooth material available. Um, they are using these on all on X cases, which have had about a 15 to 17% breakage rate, uh, the history of those. And we really think this is going to be a, a solution with that where you do a a full printing, and then you could use um, some, some gradia type stains at the laboratory to create the tissue portion of it, to have a tissue look to it, to be that um, provisional appliance on top of an all on X case before the uh, zirconia case is completed, but it's, it's that strong. And that brings us to the end of my segment, but I would be happy to answer any questions you have on this evening's program.